Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Um, you guys probably feel the way I, I am and really is tired of Zoom and, and Google Meet calls in the first place. And today's a really good reason why. Uh, technology sometimes is not friendly and things seem to go awry when you have the, the best laid plans. But we do certainly thank you for your patience and, and for your, your empathy with us as we worked out the kinks. Um, what I wanted to say to you all is, is essentially just um, that I appreciate all of the work that's been done, that's been put in to get us to this point where we're days away from our, our school year opening. You know, as a board member, my favorite time of year, of course, is graduations. But second to graduations is, of course, the first day of school, uh, being able to see our families enter our school campuses, uh, some with tears in their eyes, some with nervous excitement, um, just uh, ready to embark on the next phase of their educational journey. Uh, this year will be a little different. We'll have these um, first day of school photos taken um, at home in front of our, our laptops with our loved ones rather than in front of our, our classrooms and of our school sites. Um, but one thing that we must ensure is that um, our kids have the best access to um, educational excellence as we promised them um, as when they are in our, our, our classrooms. Um, this pandemic has really um, exposed a lot of the vulnerabilities of our, our, our society uh, and our community especially. Um, and it's gonna take each and every one of us to make sure that we look out for our neighbors, that, that we look out for um, each other, that we look out for families that, that may be in need, and that we are um, working to be um, assistance uh, to people that, that may need it. And, and that, that's included us as a district, uh, working to make sure that families uh, are able to connect uh, to their, their teachers in their classrooms um, each and every day. Um, so again, uh, we definitely apologize for the, the, the late start. Um, we're still working through a lot of the kinks. Uh, as I said before, uh, none of us on the school board or working for the district or teaching in classrooms or driving school buses or ask campus safety if have had to do so uh, during the pandemic. Uh, this is all new to all of us and we're doing our, our best to work out our way through this and we sincerely appreciate their patience and understanding. Um, I also wanna thank all of you all that submitted questions in advance. Um, we look forward to tonight's dialogue and being able to answer some of those, uh, those great questions that you guys have submitted. Um, on behalf of the board, we just wanna wish you all a great uh, school year. We hope you all are staying safe and well with your families. And please know that you can reach out to us as you have our support. If there's anything that you need that we can provide you at the school system and as a, as a community here in Linwood. So thank you very much for joining us here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hardy, for joining us for this town hall. And I too also want to take a moment to acknowledge all of our school board members for their ongoing support, their vision, and for their ongoing guidance and commitment to the Linwood community. And then, uh, so again, thank you. Those are school board. And if we can go on to the next slide, please. And also, before I start with the slide presentation, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of our dedicated and committed employees. Thank you for everything that you do to support our students, our families, as well as each other. When this pandemic hit, we didn't know how long this was going to last, but we quickly established some critical areas of support because we knew these were going to be important. And so one of the first things we did is we established a social emotional support uh, through the health hotline where we had live licensed clinical social workers to support our students and our families over 650 families were supported through these services. And then we also uh, couldn't have done this work without the collaboration of our health collaborative partners. Next slide, please. One of the things that we also did is the meal distribution. So in partnership with the local churches, um, in, including Greater Emmanuel Temple Church, uh, Reform Church LA, LA Food Bank, Linwood Partners Education Foundation, Linwood Rotary, Mastering Hope, and so many others, we were able to increase the support that we were doing the meal service through our food pantry, as well as provide meals for over 8,000 families, up to 15,000 meals a day. Next slide. In terms of the technology, we knew this is also a critical area of need. So we we're glad to share with you that we have purchased over 7,000 Chromebooks over 3,000 hotspots, and through a partnership with Linwood City, 
we are expanding Wi-Fi throughout the city to make it more accessible to our students. Next slide. And so I know that there are a lot of questions out there about when will we reopen schools? And so I do wanna share with you is that all of us know that children are best served when they're here with us in life. We miss them, we miss you. We will reopen when it is safe to do so. In the meantime, we have learned from the spring and summer. And today our cabinet will share with you some important updates regarding our safety protocols, distance learning, and what we are doing as a school district to serve you. After we hear from them, we'll have some opportunity for some discussion. We look forward to answering your questions. And again, thank you for your patience and your ongoing support. At this time, we'll be hearing from our chief business official, Mr. Greg Brown. Good evening, Linwood community. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you're all staying safer in a, in a and are in a cool place during these hot days that we currently are in. First, I'm going to start off to talk a little bit about technology here that we're doing in Linwood Unified for our kids and our staff. Um, we have made a commitment to provide each student with a lab with a laptop for the 2021 school year. We have purchased 3,000 hotspots for students in need. We've also purchased over 1,800 touchscreen Chromebooks for students with special needs. We have monitoring software for our classes in support. We have also developed a distance le lear a learning support groups at each school site. Next slide, please. Cleaning and sanitizing in all of our district school facilities before, during, and after school will be the main focus of our maintenance, operation, and transportation department. Training has been done with our staff on the proper sanitizing equipment and, mater and materials to use to make sure our students are safe and clean and staff as well when they're at our school sites when we do come back. We have also purchased personal protective gear for all of our staff and we have them for our students as well when they return to our school sites. We've also installed sneeze guards at all of the district and school sites main areas where there is interaction with the community as well. Next slide please. Daily deep cleaning and sanitizing will take place in all of our restrooms, our corridors, our lobby areas and high touch areas like door handles, elevator buttons, restroom areas, etc. We will replenish all of our sanitizing gels and wipes at each school and facility each day. Our custodian will provide additional support to assist with sanitizing the school areas during during, before, and after school, and during times where students pass between periods as well. Next slide, please. This is a picture of what our class, what, what one classroom will look like when our students come back. Our desks six feet apart and less desks in the room so our students are safe at all times while in our classrooms. Next slide, please. This is another example of a classroom, what it will look like when students come back with the desk six feet apart so our students can learn in a safe environment. Next slide, please. Under the guidance of the state, the district will adhere to the public health reopening guidelines once students return to our school sites. Students will be required to wear masks. All staff will wear a mask and PPE equipment per the Department of Health. Classrooms will be set up to practice six feet apart and a social distancing. We will check temperatures as students arrive and we will test staff as well. We will provide opportunities for students to wash their hands and we will also be disinfecting all of our facilities and surfaces on a daily basis. Next slide, please. When we arrive at school or work, no, oh, meal distribution. Food will be distributed to students on a daily basis. However, it will not 
it will not be as it was in the olden days where they were in the cafeteria. Each and every day we will have a drive-through walk-up distribution pickup opportunity where, fam where families will receive one day's worth of breakfast for the next day, lunch and super snack for that day for their students. The distribution times will be 1130 to 115 and our first day will begin on Monday the 24th, which is our first day of school. We will offer our service touchless. Barcodes will be sent home to each household within the next two weeks for distance learn, learn, uh, learning. The, fam the families will bring the barcode for each of their students that will be scanned when picking up meals. All meals will be picked up from one site. Next slide, please. Students do not need to be present to collect their meals on distribution days. As long as a parent or guardian can provide the barcode or a student ID. If parents do not have the barcode or student ID and there are no students in the car, the meal limit is three to a total for the walk up or the car. Families can send someone else to pick up their meals as well if they are not available to pick up the meals during the distribution pickup time. They will just need to be able to present the student barcode at the time to receive the meals. Next page. This is a this is a, a list of where all of our uh, meal distributions will take place. They will be at every site except for Linwood High and Vista. You those students can pick up their meals at a at a site of their choice. Next slide. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shauna Jenkins, and I'm Assistant Soup of Educational Services. And I'd like to share the schedules with you for ECE through 12th grade. The ECE schedule for distance learning, our day begins from 8 to 8.30 with family communication and outreach and assessment. From 9.30 to 11, there will be synchronous live lessons and whole group instruction. And then there is a one hour break for lunch from 11 to 12. Kids will to return at 12 o'clock for another live lesson, whole group and small group on various days throughout the week. And then from 1.30 to three, there will be a combination of family communication outreach, assessments and observation, and makeup sessions of one-on-one -on -one time assigned by teacher to students and families. To here to explain the TK Kinder first through sixth grade schedule is proud principal of Washington Elementary, Mrs. Sandra Verdusco. Next slide. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. Good evening, Lingwood families. Uh, like Dr. Dinkins mentioned, my name is Ms. Verdusco. I am a very proud principal here in the Lingwood Unified School District, and it's such an honor to serve all of our Lingwood families and, of course, our students. Allow me to share with you the TK and kindergarten schedule for the fall distance learning. Our teachers will be provided with planning time Monday through Friday from 8.45 to 8.45. Our students will be engaged in lessons, English language arts, synchronous lessons from 8.45 to 9.45. Students will be provided with a recess break for 15 minutes. They will receive synchronous instruction in mathematics for one hour as well as synchronous instruction in English language development for 45 minutes. Please know parents that on a weekly basis, overall minutes for English language arts synchronous instruction, students will receive 600 minutes, as well as for mathematics. Again, this is on a weekly basis, synchronous instruction, meaning live instruction and interaction with your child's teacher. ELD, we are looking at 120 minutes weekly of synchronous instruction. Once again, live instruction with your child's teacher. Also, our students will be provided with a 45 minute lunch break every day. In the afternoon from 12.30 to three, our students will be engaged in enrichment activities related to their learning. The afternoons will also give teachers opportunities to establish 
office hours for you to be able to connect with them, student outreach, teachers will have opportunities to plan in grade levels, and for us to have opportunities for professional development. This is where you will have a, a chance to connect with your child's teachers for any questions or any concerns that you might have. Next slide, please. Now, first through sixth grade is very similar. You're able to see that teachers get planning time in the morning. We will have synchronous lessons in ELA, in math, in ELD. And after lunch, students will also receive asynchronous learning in the areas of science and social studies. Please know, parents, that our teachers will be posting their instructional schedules in their Google Classrooms, which you will have access to, as well as your students. Any questions that you have regarding the schedule, please reach out to our teachers, to the administrators, and we will be very happy to answer your questions and, and, and explain how the weekly schedule will work. Thank you, Ms. Rodusco, for that wonderful explanation. Um, I am proud to introduce Mrs. Anna Gonzalez, principal of the Linwood High School, who will explain the middle and high school schedules. Ms. Gonzalez. Unmute, Ms. Gonzalez. Okay, I realize that. Good, uh, good evening, Linwood community. Uh, my name is Ms. Gonzalez, like Dr. Dinkins stated, and I am the principal of Linwood High School. I am also a Linwood alumni. So I'm here to explain the schedule for middle and high school students. Um, every morning, Monday through Friday, from 8 to 8.30, the students will have time to uh, engage in self-care activities. It, it provides, we provided this time so they can help um, with anything that needs to be done. I know some of them have younger siblings, so they can help with the younger siblings um, and also just take time to engage in a self-care activity so they are prepared to start the day. During this time, teachers will also be available to answer questions. On Monday, we begin with all periods. They're shortened periods. Classes begin at 8.30. Every period is 40 minutes. Um, and they have a lunch break in between. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not on Monday. Uh, they see every period, short period. They're done with the classes at 12.55, and then they have a lunch break. Um, their lunch break is from 12.55 to 1.35. Um, and at that point, the student has time to then work on school um, schoolwork. We will also be providing engaging uh, enrichment activities, uh, also tutoring, and teachers will have office hours in the afternoon. So it's important to remember that when the school, the academic time is over in terms of class time, that the students are still engaging in school related activities, that they're finishing their work, that they're um, setting up office hours uh, appointments, um, that they are taking advantage of any tutoring available um, as well as enrichment activities. Um, so it's important to stress that the school day is not over after lunch. Um, then the, the rest of the week is block schedule. The students will then um, go to first, second, and third period on Tuesday. There are 80 minute periods. During this time, teachers are expected to have live sessions. Um, we, we are requiring teachers to have two hours of live instruction per period um, per week. Um, so they will be expected to engage every day with the teach with the students. Uh, the school day or academic periods end at 1240. Again, students have a lunch break and then have that opportunity to, in to continue working on classwork, finish any assignments that were not completed during class time and during the synchronous time live sessions. Um, and again, reach out to teachers. You are also um, able to reach out to teachers between 1.20 and 3 o'clock. Um, and then on Wednesday, they then see fourth period, fifth period, and sixth period. And the schedule repeats on Thursday and Friday. Um, I also forgot to point out that Monday, teacher, on, on Monday, teachers will also be reaching out to students through live sessions. Teachers are required 
to post their schedule on Google Classroom. So make sure your students have access to their Google Classroom and that they check uh, the schedule for the week. The purpose of the Monday schedule is to make sure that the teachers check in with all students at the beginning of the week, make sure that they know what's required for the rest of the week, and they get started um, uh, with all the information they need for the week. Um, like uh, the elementary school students, high school and middle school students will engage in 600 minutes um, per period per week. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Lucas, next slide, please. So some of our teachers' expectations that have already been explained are there will be a posted syllabus on Google Classroom with information on assessing the district learning platforms, curriculum, virtual standards, contact information, grading policies, and office hours for interactive instruction. Daily synchronous instruction, live instruction will be provided, and feedback on lessons and student progress. Next slide, please. I'd like to hand it off to Dr. Brian Lucas, our um, Human Resources Assistant Superintendent. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yes, my name is uh, Brian Lucas, Assistant Superintendent for HR. Just finishing up, letting you know that Human Resources has been, has been working behind the scenes in supporting our employees through this pandemic, and also, of course, is supporting their uh, health needs and their families uh, coping with this crisis. I want to thank our labor partners for working with us through all of this work. And we've been specifically uh, designing how to return to work and also taking a look at what our high needs or high risk staff needs to be accommodated for. Also being responsible, of course, for health check procedures of our employees before they come to work and reviewing the mandatory trainings that they need to go through in regards to COVID. I wanna highlight something a little bit new that we've done this year, which is the specialized substitute preparation. I believe there was a question sent in around substitutes and there will be substitutes for teachers. We have worked out the process to how they can get access to the teachers' online lesson plans and things like that to just keep, keep learning going. But we've provided specialized training to these substitutes to kind of create a, a core of folks who are able to go in with the technology and to, uh, as I mentioned, keep learning going for students, um, even in the absence of their teacher. And that is it for human resources. And I believe that is the end of our presentation here. So one of our questions is, will hotspots be provided to our school site students? Mr. Fromm, would you like to take that one, please? Yes, they will be provided. We have purchased 3,000 hotspots. We have a few here. We're still waiting on the rest to come in. They're supposed to be in at the beginning of the week. Um, and there is a, a list that has been developed per site of their need. And they've had, the site administrator has uh, signed up on there for the amount that they need. And the amount needed at each site, once they arrive, will be given to the site where the need is. Thank you. Dr. Lucas, will there be substitute teachers? Yes, there will be. As I mentioned in my presentation, we've trained a special core of substitute teachers to work uh, in, in case our teachers need to be out and they're not able to provide online instruction. Okay. Next question. Will COVID-19 testing be implemented once students and staff get back to school? Uh, this morning in our county call with Dr. Ferrar from the Department of County of Health, um, testing is a requirement for us to open schools back up in the early spring. And we found that out this morning and are currently searching, um, waiting for guidance from the state, which should be available to us tomorrow. And we will update the community on next week. Okay, is deep cleaning happening throughout the district? Deep cleaning is going on throughout and it will go on once the students come back as well. Before school, after, during the periods. Okay. Have proper cleaning supplies for staff and students been purchased? 
Yes, they have been purchased. Can the district develop a focus group of parents to inspect school cleaning before we reopen? We, we can definitely um, do research and once schools are cleaned, um, part of our sanitation and safety is to ensure that once it is disinfected and cleaned that we have our students go in and our teachers go in and cohorts, keeping them safe and secure. So um, we can look into that on our multiple task forces and involve parents and some criteria that has to be met by the state of California. Another question is, why are there not enough books for students and why did they not receive crayons or other supplies? Our district office ordered supplies for every student in Linwood Unified School District and they should be handed out during our textbook distribution. If you have not received your books or supplies from your enrolled school, please contact your school as those supplies were delivered to school sites on last week. Does Linwood have a plan for essential working parents to be able to send schools to school like other districts? We are currently working on that plan. There are several guidelines of procedures and things we need to have in place. And we are currently putting those things in place. We also have to have a robust training of our staff in order to ensure that we meet all safety guidelines. And so we will update you as soon as we have the go ahead to make that happen. Will the district schools provide basic tech training for parents? Yes, our uh, program family specialists um, have a list of workshops for our parents as well as our digital coaches. And those workshops include how to log in to Google Classroom, how to upload assignments, how to have conversations uh, via Google Classroom, and how to respond to the teacher and get work turned in or any other questions you may have and those will all be posted on the websites. Will there be leniency for students, families, who will not be able to meet the school schedule? Yes, currently we are in the process of long-term independent study. Every school site has short-term. Long-term independent study is for longer than 20 school days, and those forms are available at every school site. If you need a form, please contact your school site fill it out, and then our acting coordinator of distance learning programs will facilitate the intake process for you. And will the district schools provide basic tech training for parents? Yes, we have techs available and um, we have workshops uh, and one-on-one -on -one sessions planned for parents through our uh, family engagement specialists. And those are all the questions at this time. Unless we have more questions, that will bring us to the end of our town hall tonight.